So we have arrived. This is the moment that I know for entrepreneurs and founders like myself and many of you, you want to see what the best startups in the ecosystem are. So we've got some amazing prizes from Google. We've got some amazing judges who have traveled from around the world who are going to be sitting over there and who are going to be judging. We're going to have some incredible pitches that are all going to happen here in this place. Uh, can we please play the video? Excellent. That's the official start of the startup pitches. Can we please put a hand together for all the entrepreneurs in the back who are ready to pitch to you guys? <laughs> Next up, we have got the lead for the VC and startup business development for Europe and the cloud team, uh, the sponsor of the amazing stage downstairs, as well as this competition from Google. Can we put our hands together, please, for David Rowland? Hello. Uh, hi, everyone. Great to be here. Uh, had some slides, but a little technical difficulties, but that won't stop us. Um, you know, it's been a great past few days. It's been a great opportunity to engage not only with the local e ecosystem, but also those that have made their way across from uh, the rest of Europe. And you know, one thing that we've seen is that you know, while Silicon, Silicon Valley still remains king as it relates to, uh, you know, sheer velocity and ticket sizes, we have seen an enormous growth across Europe. We've seen incredible traction, and not just from what I would call the usual suspects like, like London or, uh, say, Berlin or Stockholm, but you're starting to see it really happen across the board. So, you know, everyone here, you should, you should feel proud about the, you know, your part that you're playing into, in developing these ecosystems. You know, when we think about entrepreneurship and startups, it's very much a part of the DNA of Google. In fact, I, I was commenting to someone just the other day that it's very, very rare that I en encounter another Googler that has never been an entrepreneur at some point or another. So uh, it's something that we live and breathe. It's something that continues to help inspire and, and, and innovate in this world that is ever fast and ever changing. You know, quite often we, we try and leverage a lot of the other in-house expertise we have, and that goes from Google for Entrepreneurs, the people that have brought us campuses all over the globe, to also Google Cloud Platform, people that are then helping people as they're looking to build what's next. And beyond that, then, then you have things like Google Developers Launch, Launchpad Group, people that are really there to help guide people as they're looking to accelerate product market fit. And all that falls within the umbrella of just trying to bring that, that, that one Google approach to help people as they're looking to scale and achieve. So appreciate everyone um, be, being here. Uh, we look forward to continuing to engage with many of you throughout the course of the rest of today and certainly tomorrow uh, as a table captain. And uh, certainly, please put your hands together for the startups that are going to be out here for the finals. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, David. Appreciate it. Can I grab the mic for me? All right. Uh, why don't you have a seat on the couch and just wait there for a second. So next up, we're going to introduce one by one uh, the jury that are coming in, founders and entrepreneurs who are looking for funding. Now's a great time to pull out that notebook and take note of these people because they are physically here. They're not Skyping in. They're literally in this room. They've got some good funds behind them. Uh, so take note of what they've got to say. First up, can we please put our hands together for Andreas Ethan from 10X. Do you want to just share for a few minutes as to who you are yeah, and about 10X? Now. Please do. Okay. So, hello everybody. I'm Andreas from 10X. So, who is 10X? We are four serial entrepreneurs who invest our money in uh, founder teams in Europe and the Silicon Valley. Um, so, next to me, one of us is Felix Haas, who you all know as chairman and uh, host here, co-host of the Bits and Bretzels. The other ones are Jan Becker and Robert Woodke. I'm really excited to be here on the jury today uh, because we have experienced a couple of times ourselves what is ahead of all these founders who are coming up later on over there. 
Um, we at 10X, we have founded seven companies and built them into operations in over 30 countries globally. And we also have had several exits with three of them. So we really know, understand how it feels to be an entrepreneur founder and what it means to build a significant company from scratch. Um, as investors, we also understand the other side of the table, operating pretty quietly and uh, a bit under the radar. Over the last eight years, we have been investing into more than 100 founder teams in Europe and the US, uh, only investing our own money uh, and going in very early. So in contrast to the VCs, we are not a fund. But of course, we work with VCs uh, such as Andreessen Horowitz, Sequoia Index, or Holzbrink Ventures, who will come on the stage here shortly, um, uh, when they joined us in later funding rounds in our investments. So some of the investments you may know are Adyen, a service payment provider, which has been valued a couple of billion in the last funding. Um, Credit Tech, Termondo, AirHelp, or um, Jackpot, for instance. So next to investing, uh, we support the founders with our experience and with our networks. Um, so that's it. That's us at 10X. Whenever you want to have experienced entrepreneurs and founders as partners on board, do reach out to us at 10X. Excellent. Thank you so much, Andreas. Please have a seat on the couch. Next up from 500 Startups, can you please welcome Elizabeth Yin. That's for you. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Thanks so, much, thanks so much for having me, Munich and Bits and Pretzels. My name is Elizabeth Yin, and I'm a partner at 500 Startups. Check, at check, uh, 500 check. Startups, we are a very prolific seed investor. We have made over 1,600 investments worldwide across the last six years or so. So we are always looking for great seed stage companies uh, how many of you have a startup? Okay, a lot of people. So uh, we're very interested in meeting you if you feel like you have a great company. Um, we make a lot of investments. But we average about one investment every single day. And so our value proposition being based in the Silicon Valley is to help essentially bridge the gap between the Silicon Valley and wherever you are. We believe that you can build a great company anywhere these days. You don't have to be in the Silicon Valley to do so. And we do feel, though, that there are a lot of investors that we can connect people to in the Valley, as well as a lot of customer acquisition know-how and help. And so our focus at 500 is helping startups with their customer acquisition and helping connecting them to investors primarily based in the Silicon Valley. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more, you can go to our website, 500.co, or you can feel free to message me through the Bits and Pretzel system. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you. All right, next up from Cherry Ventures, we've got Daniel Glasner. Let's put our hands together for him, please. All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Daniel. Um, I started Cherry Ventures together with my two partners, Philipp Damas and Christian Mehrmann. We are based in Berlin, we invest across Europe, and we have 150 million under management that we invest in early stage consumer tech companies. But why actually turned we um, into full-time investors? First of all, the three of us are real entrepreneurs and founders. We have been um, involved in starting, building, and exiting some of Europe's largest um, startups over the last years, such as Zalando, City Deal, Groupon, and Quando. Um, but when doing this, we've been facing a lot of VCs. We pitched ourselves hundreds of times in front of VCs. We worked with a lot of VCs. Some of the VCs I'm sharing here, the couch, actually have invested in us in founders, and it was a hell of a ride. Still, we realized there is um, a need for a VC that really knows what it means to build a company from scratch, that really knows what it means, what you need when you really grow a business internationally. So what are we doing differently? Um, first of all, we think like entrepreneurs because we know exactly what it feels to start a company from scratch. Secondly, um, we bring the experience of um, scaling a couple of companies internationally because we did it ourselves. And thirdly, um, we basically are involved from the very beginning on. We want to invest as soon as possible and as early as possible. Too early is not, um, not a problem for us, but we're definitely going to st stay on for the entire journey with the founder. 
Excellent. Thank you so much. Please have a seat on the couch. Next up, we're going to have Christian Seller from Holtzbrink Ventures. Give him a hand, please. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Christian. I'm a general partner at Holtzbrink Ventures. We are a venture fund focused on early stage investments in internet-based companies. We have offices in Munich and Berlin. We have around 700 million euros under management. And we were the first investors in companies like uh, Zalando, Delivery Hero, or Flixbus. When you're looking for an investor, for a partner for your business, I think there's two things you should be looking at. One is, does the investor understand your business? And for us, we've been doing internet investments for 16 years now, and a lot of us have been in uh, management positions in internet companies ourselves before becoming investors. So we do understand a little bit about this digital business models. And the second thing you should be looking at, I think, is whether an investor understands how to build a big business. And Hospring Ventures has been involved in six companies that now have valuations of more than 1 billion euro. So if you start the next 1 billion euro company and you need help and financing, please come to us. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you, Christian. Next up from Speed Invest, we've got marie Helene Amets Haita. I, I totally ruined it. Let's give her a hand, please. Was it close? No, it wasn't even close. It was uh, <laughs> perfectly well Thank done. You. Thank you. Hi, I'm Marie Lane from Speed Invest. So Speed Invest is an early stage uh, VC, and there is many of them, of course. And we are focusing our investments on fintech and deep tech in Europe. Uh, so. What makes us special, uh, we have a tagline, and that's Speed Invest Works. What does it mean? Uh, so besides capital, we always uh, also invest the work of our partners. We have 12 partners who are all um, really experienced entrepreneurs themselves. And uh, yes, we do take for this uh, operational work some equity, but, there is a big but, uh, this is callable by the founder. So if you are not happy with the performance that we do um, as a VC work-wise, um, we give you back the equity, the sweat equity part. So um, we have two partners sitting in the US, so we're also helping European tech startups um, to expand their footprint there. And so far, it works uh, very well with uh, over 50 investments in our portfolio. And uh, happy to work with you. Thank you very much. Excellent stuff. Thank you very much. I'll take that mic from you. We've got Fritz Oitman from Acton Capital Partners. Please give him a hand. There's your microphone. Enjoy. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Fritz Oitman, and I'm from Acton Capital Partners. Uh, I used to be a founder of OnVista, and I just want to tell you a short story what I learned there, and that might help you understand what Acton does. Um, I just met at that time uh, another CEO of a publicly listed company, and I had a talk to him, and then I had to tell, well, I've got to go, because um, I've got a board meeting. And he said, oh, poor you. A board meeting? When I go to board meetings, I always have the feeling I'm going to examinations. And at the end, I feel I failed. And so I said, no, for me, that's a completely different experience. When I go to board meetings, I'm looking forward to the discussion. I learn a lot, and it helps me to get a much better idea about my business, and I get a clearer and more crisp idea. So in our board, there were two members of Acton, and that's what we do. We like to help entrepreneurs and uh, make them grow and make them uh, successful and their company is successful. We do investments in late stage, so typically B2C companies in Europe and North America, and um, we are typically in a range of three to five million or maybe even 10 million in our first round that we do invest. Total volume that we have under management is 320 million. And uh, we are invested in great companies such as Etsy or home to go Iwoka or Holiday Check. So looking forward to talk to you, maybe not today, but in a year or two years from now, but even today, we look uh, like to get to know you. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much. I'll take that mic. 
Next up, we've got Christian Labeled from eVentures. Let's give him a hand, please. There you go. Yes, hi, my name is uh, Christian. As in any conference in Germany, you need to have at least two Christians on the stage, at least if they're aged between 35 and 45. That's usually the year where that was the most famous first name. I'm with a firm uh, that's called eVentures. We're very international, so we have offices in San Francisco, here in Europe, in Asia, where we're in Tokyo and in Beijing, and also in South America and Brazil. We invest in early stage companies really around the globe. If they have the ambition to go global, that's where we want to be helpful. And uh, we have, or we're proud to have in our portfolio, great companies like Asanas or an App Annie or Farfetch that have all sort of crossed the 1 billion mark. And um, you know, as an investor, I think if you look at the portfolio, then you really know most about them. And, and we're fortunate to have been able to work with those entrepreneurs who are really outstanding. On our, on our team, we have people who've done great operating work on the past. I'm sort of one of those poor individuals who've been doing venture capital for a very long time and really are by now not able to do anything else. I've been doing this since 2002. But uh, you know, for example, on our German team here, we have the former CEO of PayPal Germany, the former chief marketing officer from Rockhead, or actually the former uh, general manager from Flickr who came back from Silicon Valley to work with us here in Berlin. So you have an interesting group of people to work with and on our website we call it the no asshole policy. So I think we, we believe investing comes down to working with people you enjoy working with and that you build a long-standing partnership with. And we try and be genuine partners and look to entrepreneurs at eye level. And uh, hopefully we'll continue doing that and look forward to talking to a lot of you later on over beers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christian. All right, finally, not least of all, is Nanad Maravats from DN Capital. Let's give him a hand, please. All right. Hi, everybody. Guten Tag, meine Damen und Herren. Ich bin Nanad Maravats, der Gründer und Managing Partner bei DN Capital. Now switch to English, because I'm American. Uh, we are an early stage investor in uh, tech and internet companies. Uh, we're based in London, but we, we have operations in um, Berlin as well as Silicon Valley. Uh, we invest mostly in marketplaces, SaaS, FinTech, uh, mobile first companies. We've actually been very fortunate in Germany. We've invested okay. in probably five of the top 25 German companies, including Auto Eins, Vinland.de, home to go Mr. Specs, et cetera. Uh, I'm very excited about what's happening okay. in, in the German market, we'll and uh, especially in Berlin, as well as Munich, uh, obviously uh, what Felix and, and Jan have done here, and Andreas, uh, very exciting. Um, and that's it. Excellent stuff. So that is our jury. Uh, before they go sit downstairs over there, uh, we do have, we've had six clusters. Uh, hopefully you guys have gone around, you've been to the pitches, and you've heard, and we've got six winners. Uh, and we've got some prizes to give them. And then those six are going to stand on that X, and I'll talk more about that at that point. They're going to pitch to you. So you get to hear six of the finest startups from this conference. Uh, but just to say thank you and congratulations to the six. So uh, do you guys want to stand up? And I think we're going to be giving prizes. I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work. Although you look really comfortable. So maybe just sit there while you're comfortable, and then, <laughs> and then we'll hand out the prizes. But from the future commerce cluster, First up, we got Freya from Spotster. That's why? Yes, I do know. So, I know there's prizes that have to happen. So, this, she's the first one, and we're still trying to figure this out. But if someone can talk in my ear, because I think we're supposed to give prizes to these guys. And I don't have any prizes, just so you know. I am not an investor, and I have nothing to give you. And I do know it's your birthday. And we're going to sing for your birthday later. And, uh, and we'll all sing. We just have to warm up a little bit. But there we go. All right. Let's give her a hand. <laughs> all right, and stay right over there. We're going to take a whole bunch of pictures. So if, you, if you guys want to move in that direction. Aha. Two prizes. Let's give him a hand again. <laughs> Excellent. And just stay on the stage. From Fast Mobility, we've got Thomas and Clever City Systems. Come on up. All right, Thomas.
All right, let's give him a hand. From the Hot Lifestyle Cluster, we've got Max in Opinary. Come on up, let's give him a hand. From Sophisticated IOT, we've got Jeremy representing Blue Log. Come on up, Jeremy. In the Smart Company Cluster, we've got Pierre with Help Check. Let's give him a hand. And finally, from the Big Money Cluster, we've got Christopher representing Candace. Come on up. Well done, congratulations. Okay, I know we want to get a big group picture. I did, I did just now, but let's say it again. Christopher from Candace. <laughs> all right, can you guys all stand on that side of the stage and let's get a, a big group photo. I think we want to do that. Here we go, don't they look good? Photos in three, two, one, smile. Excellent, let's give them all a big round of applause, please. All right, guys, you're welcome to take your seats now. Um, so all the jury members, you need to go that away. Uh, so all jury members are gonna go and take a seat over there in the front. All the entrepreneurs are now gonna go backstage and get really, really nervous. Out of curiosity, because I know this is a founders conference, and a lot of you are founders, um, just again, because it might be a slightly different crowd, how many of you have started your own company at some point in your life? So raise your hand real high, real high. Fantastic, and keep your hand there, keep, keep your hand there. Oh, I saw some hands go down. Keep your hand there. And if you have pitched at representing a company for money, raise the other hand. Okay, fantastic. If you have never pitched in your life, raise your hand. All right. If you've never seen a pitch in your life, raise your hand. You guys are in for a treat. You guys in the middle over there who have never seen a pitch. So what is going to happen is we're going to invite these guys one by one. We've got a green, it's like the X factor. We've got a green X where they will stand. They get three minutes on the clock. After three minutes, the microphone cuts off, and then this charming, attractive guy walks up and says, hey, well done, wherever they are in their talk. So they've been practicing. They have two minutes of Q&A from these guys, and there are a couple things that they are looking at. They're looking at team, they're looking at product, the technology innovation, they're looking at the market opportunity, they're looking at the traction that they've got so far, and finally, the quality of the pitch and presentation themselves. Um, these guys have done remarkably well. Uh, fighting a lot of other startups outside to get to the place that they are. One of them gets an amazing, amazing prize. I'll give you a clue. It involves a gentleman who was sitting over there earlier and a specific an island. So an amazing prize, plus that trophy as well, which also looks amazing. But we'll get to the prizes. <sighs> we feeling ready. How do you guys feel? You guys feeling ready? Yeah. Okay, yeah. six amazing entrepreneurs, founders, only request from my end. This is really scary, standing up here. I know on my face I look like I'm smiling, but my heart is beating really, really fast. And there's a lot of you, and there's only seven of us on stage. Can I please ask, not for my sake, but when they do come up, and uh, when I announce the name, will you just make them feel so, so welcome? Will you just show them all the support that they have, the startup ecosystem here in Munich behind these guys? Because it is nerve wracking to be up here. So I'm going to announce. And as soon as I announce the name, and as they come up, will you just give them a thunderous applause? And then I'm going to say, and the time starts, boom. And then just hold it. And we got some questions. And as soon as the question's done, will you just give them a thunderous applause again? Is that okay? Is that, is that reasonable? Can we do that? So I'll, I'll give an example. And we're going to do it with our first person. It's the birthday girl from Spotster. Can you put your hands together for Faya, please? Yes, that's awesome. Okay, do we have the clock ready? Let's take a look. Okay, three minutes on the clock starting right now. Good luck. Okay, so let's get that done because I really want to get to my birthday beer. I founded Spotster about two years ago with a beautiful guy that you will see on the next slide. 
His name is Tobias and he's the developer behind our company. Tobias is a tech person, as you can see, and as a tech person, he has one severe passion, Nerf guns. So I thought it would be best to describe to you what we do in a practical example. We have this Nerf gun hail fire. It's a gun of gun. So this one costs 130 bucks on Amazon. Amazon is actually run by Jeff, which you can see on the right-hand side from your perspective. So Jeff sells this Nerf gun for 130 bucks. There's one problem, our startup has very bad salaries. So Toby can't afford it for 130 bucks, but would love to buy it for 100 bucks. Jeff used to be a startup, but right now has a lot of money, so he can actually sell it for 100 bucks, but he has no idea that there is a customer actually wanting to have this product for a little less than 130. So we thought we have to actually solve this very problem. On the next slide, we show you how. The right-hand side is made for Toby. So Toby goes to Jeff's store, sees the Nerf gun, saves the Nerf gun away because he has spotsters, so he can easily save products and keep track of them. We keep track of that product and we send Toby a mail saying, hey, your Nerf gun is on sale, you wanna buy it right now? That's what we do for Toby, but on the left-hand side, there's Jeff. So what's Jeff's plus of it? We tell Jeff, yo, Jeff, there's Toby who wants to buy your Nerf gun for 100 bucks. You wanna go to 100 bucks instead of 130 just for him? And Jeff can actually look at every product that he offers and see who's interested in what at what price. And so what we're actually trying to create is individual prices for each and every product once the retailer knows that you're interested in the product. How do we do this? We don't only do this with Jeff, but as you can see on the next slide, we do this with 5,000 partners right now, spread across Germany, Austria, Switzerland, France, and the UK. Those retailers send us their data every day, which results in a database of 400 million products, which we actually manage, analyze, and have stored in our databases, which is why we love Google Cloud Services and the voucher of it. This is who we work with, but how do we make money? This is the most important question for the guys in the first row. It's pretty easy. If you buy the Nerf gun or Tobias does, we get a very small but nice commission off it. So we actually earn money whenever you buy a product. The other thing is, Jeff is really interested in the data of how many people are interested in what sneaker or what Nerf gun so that he can set individual prices. And as we're not like the welfare state, we do this for a price. So we have two sources of revenue from B2C and B2B, and we do all this to actually make prices individual instead of general. Thanks a lot. All right, amazing job, fantastic. Stand over there, hold on to the microphone. That was really good, well done. All right, two minutes on the clock. Which of you on the jury have a question? Go for it, Fritz. What's the revenue level you have? Sorry, can you say that again? Sorry. What's the revenue level you have achieved right now? Uh, right now, we're only doing the B2C revenue level because we are currently working on the data, so B2B is to come. The current level just reached five-digit numbers this month, so normally four-digit, now five-digit. Anyone else got a question? Um, Daniel? Yeah, it's on. Hello. Um, it's, it seems to be quite a competitive space you're in, in terms from um, customer acquisition. So how are you going to acquire customers? We're actually at the moment actively acquiring customers via online marketing and media. We have 200,000 people being enrolled in our service, meaning we have the name and email address to actually contact the person whenever there is a price on sale. And we actually work together with a couple of uh, printing houses and online distributors to get the customers to our app. Excellent stuff. All right. Well, thank you. Let's give her hands and why don't you have a seat, please? All right. Next up from the Fast Mobility Place, please keep your hands going together for Thomas from Clever City Systems. Come on, you can make more noise than that. All right. Thanks very much. Hi, I'm Thomas, the founder and CEO of Clever City. We are a Munich based company, three and a half years old, and 20 people in the team. Searching for a parking space is probably one of the most time-wasting activities worldwide. In average, about one-third of the cars in a big city are only circling around to find a parking space. It takes about between 20 and 40 minutes on average to, take, uh, to find a parking space. In cities like Barcelona or Madrid, many people actually give up. If you would live in Paris and work in Paris, you could spend three years of your life looking for a parking space. So why is that? Well, it's based on a medieval system called luck, uh, or some people use instinct. Other people, like my wife, they use karma 
Do you know about Parking Karma? Parking Karma works this way. You visualize that right in front of the restaurant where you want to go tonight, a car will pull out and you get that space. And she's convinced it works. And when it doesn't work, it's my fault because I didn't visualize enough. So we said there must be a different way, a smarter way to do this. Wouldn't it be great if we would have the data and the information in advance before we go there, where there's a space, and even more important, where there's not a space so we can make an intelligent decision to take the subway, for instance. So we created a... Uh, oh, I have to do the slides. Okay. So we created a new system which is actually mounted on the lamppost because in the future the lamppost will be the strategic hub to collect data in the smart cities. So it's a sensor that basically measures about 30 spaces under the sensor and measures exactly how much space is actually left for your car. So in the app you, you say roughly which car you have and we give you the space that fits uh, your car. And since uh, a lot of cities change their lighting fixtures into modern LED light to save um, energy, we also integrated our sensor into modern luminaires and we're already working with two lighting companies, uh, leading lighting companies in the world to install these sensors. One of our first installation with lighting companies is in Australia and our sensor also switches on the light. So we actually switch the light in Australia from Munich so that tells you how connected the world is. But we're also offering a very important management system for the cities. Because at the moment, imagine you're a hotel manager. At the moment, the hotel manager doesn't know how many rooms are occupied, how many people are paying, and, and uh, how much he makes at the end of the year. And if you are a user and you want to look for the space, you run up and down the floors, open all the doors, and you try to find for an empty bed. That's how parking works at the moment. So we change that. We give a management tool to the cities. We show them exactly where spaces are available, and we allow them for the first time to manage their parking properly. The problem is people are so frustrated that uh, they don't pay. And we will change that. Excellent stuff. Just stay over here, please. Hold on to the microphone as well. So we've got two minutes for Q&A. We'll start now. Thank you. Then I, then I can take over, right? Yeah, we'll start with you and then we'll go to I you. I mean, it seems to be a pretty sophisticated system. Can you tell us how much revenues you do or which proof of concepts you have achieved? So some more KPIs. Yes, in the last year we managed to uh, uh, be in 15 cities. Our, uh, worldwide, our most recent um, installation is in Vancouver at the University of British Columbia. We installed near Brisbane. Uh, we are in Cologne. We are in Bad Hersfeld near Frankfurt. So we have 15 installations as a proof of concept, which work extremely well. And we just won the tender from the Westminster, uh, London Westminster Council to install our sensors in London. Uh, at the taxi ranks so that the taxis know when there's a space available and they can go back uh, to the taxi ranks. So That's we really managed good. to get a pretty good track record in the last year. Let's take one more question from Marie Ellen. So uh, it's uh, very uh, expensive usually for a city to establish uh, with such a system the, the city. There is other parking system based on censoring of mobile phones out there that even indicate what category of parking you have. Uh, so, what's your competitive uh, advantage, you think, over these systems? Well, our competitors are mostly ground sensors and you need to define the space exactly. Uh, but in modern cities you want small cars, so we detect floating spaces. Our sensors can be mounted in basically 20 minutes at a lamppost and cover a huge area. So we have quite an advantage in terms of cost. And the city, the cost for the cities will be around 15 minutes of their parking time per day. So they break even in the first 15 minutes uh, when somebody parks. Excellent. Thank you so much, Thomas. Thanks. Well Thanks done. So I'll take the microphone. Have a seat, please. All right. Next up, we've got Max from Opinary. Let's give him a hand, please. Have a seat over there. Don't. Not to have a seat. Stand over there. You feeling ready? I'm feeling very ready. You feeling uh, good? Very much so. I just have to inform you about one little thing. Uh, there's a technical problem with my presentation, I've just been informed. So if you want to see a sample of uh, what we do, please go to Spiegel, press a compass, and you will see what I'm uh, describing in a second. And after the disclaimer, stay right there. Thank you very much. Your three minutes starts right now. So um, let me quickly start. My name is Max from Opinary. 
and uh, I want to tell you about content in the net. You all love content. That's actually what you do in the internet. It doesn't matter if it's the news site or the weather channel or if it's one of the sites from Manwin, as we've heard yesterday. You guys love it, right? The only thing is that we have no way to interact with the content. Uh, engagement, user engagement is that, it's broken. Can I have a show of hands how many of you have left a comment or participated in polling market research in the last month? Anybody? Okay, it's roughly, it's a bit less, normally it's 1%, this was less than that, um, of users do that. And that is a real problem because in a moment where people don't engage with the content, um, the content creators, and I mean politicians, I mean brands, I mean uh, journalists, don't know what you truly think. They don't understand what your opinions are, and that void is something um, that creates dangerous trends. Um, all of you see uh, the populists uh, that have been taking over the political debate from the US to Europe. So what we do at Opinary is that we create little engagement widgets directly in the content of uh, major news sites that allow users to, on the one hand, see the debate, and on the other hand, interact and share their voice with just one tap. There's no login, there is just a tap, and you're part of the debate. So how successful are we with that? We currently have 15 million people who see that every month, and 20%, 20% actually share their voice, and it gets better. This is habit forming. People actually want to share their opinion. That's why we see that our users keep on coming back. It is becoming a habit. And currently, we have roughly 12 times the engagement rate of Twitter or Facebook, right? And we collect three million opinions on a range of topics per month. So um, why is that so huge? Why is that big? So the first thing is that in our launch market, we have integrated with all of the major newspapers and all of the news sites, content creators, and collect opinion opinions right in the content. The second thing is, we started creating a very powerful product for global brands. Real insights, real attention on the topics in the right environment. Bayer, MasterCard, McKinsey, they all love it and they are our clients. But that's what we've already achieved. I'm here to ask for your support because I want to build the world's largest kind of real-time sentiment platform. To do that, we need your support we want to make opinions matter again. This is also a $40 billion market, um, which you might find interesting. Thank you. Excellent. You can keep uh, hold on to the mic. I like that you left that point sign for the very end. By the way, $40 billion. All right, let's go to some questions. Should we start with you, Christian? Yeah. When comments were new, I mean, a lot of people interacted in comments, and now it sort of uh, has died down. How do we make sure that your thing is not the same, that over time people lose interest? So um, that's a good question. Um, we don't see that trend. We actually see the opposite. Um, we've been live one and a half years, and the rate of people coming back is very high. Yeah? More than half of our users at our current growth rate yeah, is coming back and has answered within a month more than five um, of these polls. Right? Um, and we play around with the way we present information visually as well to keep the engagement rate up. This Excellent. is our focus. Let's get into that. Uh, what's the exact business model you predict here? Um, so the business model is on the one hand for the publishers, it's a SaaS relationship with a revenue share on top. Yeah? And on the brand side, we essentially kind of pay uh, a basic fee for sponsored ads and for insights plus reach, which is a typical CPM deal. And are you generating, re generating any revenues already? Yes, we are. Excellent stuff, all right. Let's give him a hand. Please have a seat. I'll take the microphone. If you want to pass the remote to the next person. Okay, from the sophisticated IoT space, can we please welcome Jeremy from Blue Log. Have Come over there on the X over there. The green X. If you want to stand right over there. You feeling ready? Yes. You feeling good? Yeah. Okay. Three minutes on the clock starts right now. Okay. So hello everyone, my name is Jeremy Lawrence, I'm co-founder at uh, Blue Log, a company whose mission is to make sure that the fresh and frozen food products you buy and the medicine you take were kept at the right temperature. How do we do this? Well, let's take the example of the supply chain of salmon. 
Salmon, as fish in general, is one of the most temperature sensitive products. It has to be kept between two and four degrees from the producer to the final consumer. All these actors depicted in this slide need data. They need to know in real time whether the cold room or the fridges is malfunctioning. They need to know where the truck carrying the shipments currently is. And they need to record temperature history and share it in an easy way with all of their actors and customers. And that's why at BlueLog we have come up with this device. This device not only gives you real time data such as temperature, humidity, it also records the whole history and you can access it via smartphone using NFC technology. Our devices are so small that they can actually be directly integrated in boxes, making them invisible and providing the right data to the right person at the right time. All this is made possible thanks to unique characteristics of the Blue Log devices, such as the long range. With, with this device, it can communicate up to 800 meters in range with a gateway connected to the cloud. Also has very long uh, battery life. We use a coin cell battery and we have 10 year battery life with this device, for instance. Uh, it's also highly scalable, which means that you can have 10,000 of these boxes that communicate at the same time to the same gateway in the same warehouse. And the cost is uh, so affordable that it can actually be cost effective to add our devices on almost any box or any pallet transporting temperature sensitive products. Actually, BlueLog is the first application of an M2M -M technology called BlueSan that was developed by my father-in-law and a team of experienced Polish engineers in cooperation with the University of Polytechnic in Poznan in the last 15 years. Since our official start in 2015, we've had high growth, and for instance, one month ago, we signed a large contract with the biggest Polish food retailer to equip 200 of their shops. And this is the first stage of a deployment that will uh, go to up to of the 10,000 shops. And this summer, our loggers and, and devices were also used to monitor one million vaccines in Africa. And it's only uh, we have similar discussions with some of the largest pharmaceutical, food, and logistics companies in the world. Thank you all. Excellent stuff. Good job, Jeremy. How do you feel? Good. Good. All right, judges, questions, please. Fritz. What's your business model? Well, we sell the hardware. So we have the, this device that you've seen. Is the first, uh, so we sell these devices to uh, food retailers, pharmaceutical companies, logistics providers. And we also actually sell the gateways to make it, for instance, I have a gateway here, so it can be that small and can provide the whole connectivity in uh, one whole warehouse, one hospital, etc. And then the, actually the software is uh, given for free. Uh, it's all included in the hardware. Yes, yes. Um, how many startups, or how, sorry, how many customers do you already have? And maybe you can give us also an idea of the devices you have deployed. Yes, so we have around 10,000 devices currently deployed. So all around the world, from uh, Mexico to, uh, to India. And we have around uh, more than uh, 50 customers uh, who uh, use it regularly, either for storage or transport. Excellent. All right. Let's give Jeremy a hand, please. Thank you. Excellent. Super. Next up in the Smart Company Cluster, please put your hands together for Pierre from Help Check. That's for you. Come over here. You're going to stand over there. Thank you. Face them. There's some wonderful people in the back seats as well, so make sure you speak to everyone. Your three minutes starts right now. Yeah, grüß Gott. My name is Per Schulz. I'm 27 years old. In the past, I worked in tech in Bangalore and Berlin, and almost one year ago, we founded Help Check. We are a justice as a service startup based in Düsseldorf, means that we are challenging companies by representing consumers in their fight for justice and compensation based on laws and regulations. We strictly follow a no win, no fee policy, and we love that the law firms we work with know how to code as well. Having said this, our vision is to become Europe's leading consumer help platform. The first product we started off with are life insurances. Because due to European law, there are more than 100 million incorrect life insurance contracts in Germany with a total premium paid of over 400 billion euros. For the single customer, that means that he or she 
is entitled for an average compensation of around 18,200 euros. So how does it work? We developed a multi-channel approach, means we have our online platform, helpcheck.de, and we also have offline cooperation partners, for example, insurance brokers, who already have a large customer base. But the process behind it is pretty much the same. So on the first step, our customers get a free legal assessment, and we tell them whether their contract is incorrect or not. If the contract is incorrect, we calculate their claim, and based on that information, they can decide whether they want to do it with us or not. If they do it with us, and it comes to a payout, we take a 25% commission, but only on the value added. So last but not least, to all Germans in the room, go and help check DE, and we check your claim for free. Thank you very much for your attention. I appreciate it. Excellent stuff. Thank you so much, Pierre. Just stand over there, please. I like it. Short, concise, to the point. Judges, who's got a question? Elizabeth, go for it. Can you talk about your margins on this, since this seems to be pretty people-intensive to do all this checking? Um, the margins are actually pretty high, so um, let me give you an example. Um, online, we get a customer for around 150 euros, and uh, at the end of the day, we get a revenue of around 4,000 euros. Go for it, yeah. How's the competition? Because there are also uh, other companies who do the same for flights where you try to get uh, reimbursement for delayed flights and the like. Exactly, exactly. So we are the first player that is online and offline as well, and we are also the first online player. Excellent stuff. All right. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to end over that. Can you hand the remote, please, to Christopher? I'll take the microphone. Thank you very much. Excellent stuff. Let's give him a hand. All right, and finally, from the big money space, let's put our hands together again for Christopher from Candice. Come over here. Thanks. All right, three minutes on the clock. Perfect. Make it good, it starts right now. Perfect, so guys, now it's about something that was really disappointing to me, and that is accounting. Every company has to do it, every SME, and that worldwide, so therefore, we thought we have to change something. Since this is how accounting process look like, you have folders, you have stamps, and even if you are so innovative that you have software in place, it looks, for example, like that. It's not automated, it's not easy to understand, and in addition, when you sit in front of it, you have to type data manually, you have to take care of it, so the software helps you, yes, but that's far away of how we see the future of counting. But we fixed that. So Candice takes all your data in the company. It takes all your invoices, reads it out. It takes all your bank account statements, all your transactions from credit cards, from PayPal accounts, and um, processes it. And very soon we also will take other data sources, so Slack, uh, um, Google, Facebook, Amazon, etc. So even when an invoice is not yet issued, we will take the data to put it into a PL. Then when we have all the data, we deliver the following. We show a liability overview. So the customer, the entrepreneur knows exactly in real time which invoices he or she has to pay. We also generate booking references. So we know to which account an invoice has to be booked to, and we do that. In addition, we also have an approval system in place so we know where to reach an employee to get an approval for an invoice. And very soon, and we are working hard, hard, hard on that to get a real-time P&L. And for the Germans, you probably, or, um, you probably know the BVA, BWA, BVA. You get it, it's a 10, 20 page long PDF from the tax advisor. It's basically something that needs disruption and that's what we are fighting for. Um, so far, everything started at the beginning of 2015 with winning the Bankathon, one of the uh, fintech hackathons, three days coding nights and days. We won it. Afterwards, we got some funding, we got some traction, now we got even more traction. And finally, now we are ready to grow, grow, grow. We have uh, 200 customers on the platform, 
And next step, beginning of next year, is internationalization. So we go in other markets, since that's something every company has to deal with worldwide. And then we cooperate with other accounting systems to put the data into the system and to automate accounting. Thanks for the audience. Excellent. X, why did you move from the X, man? Come on. Not over there, right over here. All right, jury members, who's got a question for him? I mean, obviously, you're tackling a hot topic because there's also a couple of other startups that are trying to do the same that uh, started in the last couple of months. How do you differentiate yourself? Yeah, so basically, we are completely tech focused. We don't do services, we don't do accounting, uh, accounting at the end. So we don't employ accountants, we just do tech. We see that there are 90,000 tax advisors out there. We see that we can, when we have to cooperate with them, since they do accounting, we don't need to offer accounting services. We are pure tech. That's the differentiation. All right, let's take a second question. Um, why do you want to internationalize so quickly, um, given that you're in a space that is heavily regulated? So basically, uh, we don't operate in a segment that is uh, regulated since we don't do the final accounting. So the tax advisor does the final accounting. They are regulated. They have to uh, be compliant to the national tax uh, declaration thing, stuff, etc., etc. But we, as the automation processor in front of the final bookkeeping, in front of the final tax declaration, we do not need to deal with these uh, crazy stuff out there. Yeah. Excellent stuff. Let's give him a hand, please, everybody. Thank you, well done. Super, have a seat. Okay, so now, that is the end of our pitching. Jury members, uh, you guys can have an opportunity to chat for a little bit. The rest of us have uh, two important jobs. One is to know what one of these guys are gonna win, and I'm gonna tell you what the prizes are. But before that, no. birthday girl, please come on up. Come on, birthday girl, come on, come on, we wanna do this for her. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, stand up. Let's go, come on, birthday girl, come on, come on. Can we all quickly sing for her? Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you so much. <laughs> have a seat, have a seat. Excellent stuff. The problem with that song is you always start it way too high. I know we have one opera singer in the house, uh, but we always start that song way too high. I always start, I can never sing that last line. Okay, I know you guys wanna know what the prizes are, so I'm gonna tell you what the prizes are, and then the head of the jury's gonna come up, and these six are waiting to see who's gonna win one of the prizes. Um, who wins the prize, they're gonna come up, we we'll take some photos, it's super exciting. But here we go. First of all, I just wanna let you know that all of these six finalists have worked really hard to be here. As you noticed earlier before, they got a cash prize of 5,000 euro, plus one hour mentoring by a jury member, a private pitch session with another jury member, 20,000 euro Google Cloud credit, and they had the opportunity to pitch right here. So, can we again give all six of them a big round of applause, please? All right, now um, we, the next part has uh, two pieces that are really, really exciting. So first of all, let me tell you, the grand finale prize is that they get to join the finals of the Extreme Tech Challenge on Sir Richard Branson's island. Oh, I should have competed. This could have been my chance to be there. And they get one ticket for the challenge, accommodation and a flight. And also, in addition to being part of the Extreme Tech Challenge, they also get to receive a finalist spot with 500 startups in San Fran. So two exceptional, exceptional prizes. But the part that probably is most difficult for them is lifting that amazing trophy. So uh, just real quick, and I, and I hate to do this, but I have to kill time because until they tell me my ear, um, I just am curious, do you want to just each take a turn and just see, can you lift it up on your own? So just quickly, quickly, go for it, because I'd like to see if, you, if you're able to lift. Okay, not bad, not bad. Let's go again. Let's see who will do the best. You know, it's like football players, right? They all have a way of, of showing that they won. Okay, good, good. So far, this side is doing really well. I'd, let's pass it back in this direction and see if they're able to lift the trophy. It looked heavier. Nice. <laughs> Maybe if I stood on top of it, it'll be much, much harder. And I'm just curious, when they win, Ben, do you have some music that you're gonna play? Do you have some like, da-da-da-da-dum? Okay. 
Also, what I'd like, what I really love, especially on wooden floors, is there's two ways to participate. You can either just clap, like that, politely. Can everyone just do this real quickly? Just t politely. <laughs> politely, cool. And you can get a little bit louder, and just move your hands a little bit wider, good. It's possible to go, woo! Nice. And the final, which I can't do, is it also helps if you just do that with your feet, and you get a really nice roar around the building. Nice, excellent. So, head of jury, come on, come on up. Oh, all the jury's gonna stand there. Head of jury, come on up, and you have the amazing task. I need to get you a microphone. So come on, guys. All right, jury, come on the right side. Uh, if one of you can hold the trophy to hand over, <laughs> I should have checked if the jury can hold the trophy. So if you get all the jury on this side in a line, excellent. Are you happy to make the announcement? I'm very happy to make the announcement, yes. Okay, so you hold on to that, and when I cue them, they now have practice exactly what they need to do to nice. show how much love and support they have for these startups. So is that microphone working? No. Okay, can we make sure they might just keep talking? Hi, hi, hi. You hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Excellent. Okay, so. If we can all please start with the legs. Here we go. Just, just the legs. Great, excellent. And we do a polite clap. Okay, now if you can open the envelope. I can, I can open keep it. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Oh. Let's get louder. Okay. Oh, and I think we have a very, very, very nice winner and a very nice birthday present for Freya. All right, here we go. Woo! Fryer will go to Next Island. All right, hold it straight out. Whoa! <laughs> nice. Excellent. Guys, can you all stand up over here, please? If you can line up over here, just to my left. Okay, excellent. Hi, can you come here in the middle? Can you hold that over your head? We're going to get a quick photo. All of us can stand in this picture. Over your head, over your head. We need to be able to see. <laughs> or to the side. There we go. Excellent. Moving closer. You can stop that now. Okay, one last time. Can we give a thank you to everyone on the stage here, please? Off stage, please. Excellent. I can't believe it that after two incredible days at Bits and Pretzels, we're almost coming to an end. We've had Kevin Spacey, we've had Sir Richard Branson,